You know, I think the thing I love most about Tulsa is when it comes down to it, we are and we have been since our founding a city of neighbors with high expectations. I'm GT Bynum and I'm the mayor of Tulsa. But we also have to recognize that we've been the home to great tragedy and there's no greater tragedy in the history of Tulsa than the 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre. Before the Race Massacre, Tulsa had one of the most diverse economies in the country. I mean, we were a magnet for black entrepreneurs from around the United States who knew that they could come here and find success. The Race Massacre destroyed that. Greenwood before the massacre was a mecca of black entrepreneurship. It was black excellence at its best. My name is Vanessa Hall Harper. I am the District 1 City Councilor and currently the chair of the Tulsa City Council. You could get any and everything you needed here in this community. The dollar circulated multiple times before leaving. And so you saw infrastructure, you saw just support you saw a thriving community. The term Black Wall Street came about, actually George Washington Carver coined that term. He was actually here visiting, and when he got here, he was so excited and shocked to see how successful business was and entrepreneurship and that spirit that he coined it Negro Wall Street. And later, it was changed to Black Wall Street. And it means so much, not only the entrepreneurial spirit side of it, but just the spirit of wanting to help and engage with one another. If someone had an idea, but they didn't have the resources behind it, uh, then they came together to, to make these dreams come true. And that is what the spirit of Greenwood is. And we are working diligently to bring that back today. We absolutely have to remember, we have to acknowledge, and certainly nothing is wrong with commemoration, but that's where we tend to stop. So when are we going to take the next step and actually make right what was done in this community? Dick Rowland, a young shoeshine boy working in downtown Tulsa, had been given special permission to go into the Drexel building to go up to the third floor and use the restroom and get water. He did this every day. There was a young white girl, Sarah Page, who worked as an elevator operator. No one knows what happened on this particular day except for Dick Rowland and Sarah Page. What we do know is that Dick Rowland steps into the elevator, the elevator door is closed, and there's a scream. The elevator door is open and Dick Rowland runs. Dick Rowland is arrested the following day. An article came out in the Tulsa Tribune with the headline, Nab Negro for Attacking Girl. Some estimates have it that there were several thousand whites who had gathered in front of the jailhouse by that evening and a group of maybe a hundred or so black men returned. This time a white man approached a black man with a gun and they began to struggle over the gun. And during the struggle, the gun goes off. And at that point, it's no longer about Dick Rowland or Sarah Page. Within a 16 hour period, whites would invade the Greenwood District and destroy 35 square blocks. More than a thousand homes were burned to the ground. More than 300 black owned businesses completely destroyed. Somewhere around 300 people lost their lives on that single day. Just that quickly, a thriving, successful black owned business district, the most successful during that time in 1921, would be reduced to ruins. You think about the aftermath of the race massacre when the response of our community was not that we were gonna hold to account the people that destroyed lives, neighborhoods, and businesses, but instead that we were just not gonna talk about it as a city and try to move on and cover it up for decades. And I think those two things the destruction of Black Wall Street and the cover-up after it have lasting effects to this day. We can't go back in time and change that, but what we can do is do right by them in 2021. We have launched a search for the missing graves of the victims 
Uh, this summer, we will be doing an exhumation of a mass grave that we found last year through that process to see if these are in fact victims of the race massacre and ideally be able to recover DNA from them that will allow us to connect their remains with their descendants uh, and their descendants can finally know what happened to their family members. This is not a black story. This is not a white story. It's a Tulsa story. My name is Jay Cavan Ross. I'm uh, the chairman of the Public Oversight Committee for the Tulsa Mass Graves Investigation. The mayor has chosen different members of the community, some of the descendants, some of the community leaders, researchers, scientists, all trying to find out what happened to those who lost their lives a hundred years ago. We are operating off the same sites as identified in the State Commission to study the Tulsa Race Riot of 1921. Oakland Cemetery is where we are today. Booker T. Washington Memorial Gardens Cemetery, which is now Roland Oaks Cemetery. New Block Park with the addition of the Canes area, which is a homeless encampment at this time. We started in July of last year. We went 15 feet down into the Earth's crust and found nothing other than things that are considered field debris. We reconvened in October of last year, which we were able to locate at least 12 coffins laying side by side in a trench. And scientists are saying that possibly there are more coffins underneath the ones that we can see on the top. We know one of the most basic things that any city should provide for its citizens is that if you're murdered in that city, we will try to find out what happened to you and render justice for your family. And in 1921, Tulsa did not live up to that. My hope is that by our community pulling together now and trying to do the right thing, by the victims of the 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre, we can work toward healing in our community and build the kind of city that we want to leave to future generations.